Well, we're doing the adobe repairs here at the Presidio Officer's Quarters for the seismic retrofit of the building. The building is very significant in the fact that it's the only adobe building left of the original Presidio that was essentially a, a quadrangle. And the building has survived numerous alterations, earthquakes, and survived politics. <laughs> different governments, Spanish, Mexican, America, and everyone had their different mark and uh, subtle changes, drastic changes. And what we're seeing now is really just several walls left of an expansive adobe presidio that was founded in 1776 and finished out in the early 1800s. So we're very fortunate actually to have Pat here. He works primarily in the Southwest, but has also done a lot of repair work on California missions, which are adobe, and also does work in other countries like Chile that have adobe structures. And the thing that's unique about Pat is that he does repairs using the traditional methods for adobe. Our adobe repair consists of using traditional adobes which are not amended with cement or asphalt. And the reason that we're using traditional adobes is it's very important that the adobes breathe. And when you use amended adobes, those adobes don't breathe and those repairs call, cause the adobe behind it to retain water. And uh, water is adobe's biggest threat. So using traditional adobes that helps minimize the retainage of water in the adobe walls. This adobe and older adobes are pretty much the same consistency of materials. They're about 60 to 80% sand, 20 to 40% clay. And it's that range of sands and it's that range of clay that make that work. And it's really important that besides the traditional adobes that we use lime and mud plaster wherever we can because that in turn is permeable. Here you can see that we're doing some stone and lime underpinning to the base of this wall. This uh, foundation is originally stone and mud mortar and we're using lime to be able to structurally support the material above and we're also doing it because lime's a really great material and in, in drawing moisture out and the lime is right here it's a white part. So Pat's removing all of the deteriorated bricks, typically at the base of the building, which is where most of the problems are because that's the part of the adobes that have been the wettest. And they shim it to prevent cracking and also settling and other things. So he basically has to remove adobes that are deteriorated and place them with new adobes. They are laid up like brick is with mortar, but instead of cementitious mortar, we use mud mortar, which is right from the site, exactly the same way it was done in 1776. He also has to make a stable surface at the top of the wall so that we can do our seismic work because the stainless steel rods are tied at the top of the wall, so it has to be on one continuous stable surface. So his crew are working not only at the base but at the top of the walls. It really is an art. It's not something that one picks up easily. And something we've all learned in the last couple of weeks is trying to figure out where to stop. It's not really figuring out where to start on this project, it's where to stop on this project. And that's um, something that only one that has worked with Adobe for years would know. And that's Pat. I think one of the things that always moves me is the fact that when we talk about green building, Adobe is about as green as it gets. And when you talk about preservation, it's, it's a perfect marriage of, um, of both worlds because we're preserving an already built building and it's good green technology. So it's exciting. This type of work is something that, that those of us in the, in the profession always uh, live for because every day is different, every project's different. You take your lifetime of experiences and you apply it to your next project. So it's a good challenge. <laughs>